If I have two eyes in your head, you can read what we search for. Science. My goodness, you got it. You're so brilliant, you can read. <laughs> All right. So, as we said, the value of innovation is not in the ideas. It's in the what? Yeah, good. Somebody's reading. Somebody's paying time lighting this. This is a good group. You all passed out from your bachelor's course, right? Some of you even have masters. Anybody have PhD besides Sanganisa? Good, good, good. Some of you have PhD. So, so you're able to read and understand the English language very well. Really good. Okay. Super. And we look for insights in certain places so that we can innovate for profit. Again, you guys are technologists. You don't care about profit, right? I'm a business guy. I care about profit. So this is what we're going to cover, and it will help you to understand these things. All right. So we look for the insights in the areas and in the domains that are listed on the slide. We search for insights so we can innovate for profitability. Any questions about this? Any word is not clear? Should be pretty simple. I think you are knowing these words. Yes? Good. Okay. But let's explain a little bit what happens. What happens when you put two axes together? What do you get? A matrix. If you've ever worked with a business consultant, that's what business consultants sell. We all have matrices. We all have two by two matrix. That's how we earn the big bucks. You want to get rich? Develop a two by two matrix. It's a joke. By the way, I'm actually a frustrated stand-up comedian. You know what a stand-up comedian is? He tells jokes. Okay. I'm a frustrated stand-up comedian. Do you know why I'm a frustrated stand-up comedian? Because my jokes aren't funny. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, you laughed at that joke. Thank you, thank you so much, I love you. <laughs> you didn't laugh, see, I proved it's not funny, right? <laughs> okay, so you end up with a two-by-two two matrix, and if you're looking at customers, and you're looking at opportunities, you get customer opportunities. This is obviously too complicated for anybody here, right? <laughs> You mean it's not too complicated? It's simple? Okay, what are some of the other places you can look for an insight? Just shout it out. Yeah, technology opportunity. Somebody's paying attention. Good, good, good. Okay, so these are the four. So what questions do you have based on this slide? Please. Who is the customer? Well, I think that, who is the customer here? I think it usually depends on the business. My, I am concerned with teaching only. Great, brilliant. Oh, that's a fantastic question. What is your good name, sir? Praveen. Mr. Praveen has asked a question. Who is the customer? Let's stop our mini lesson and ask you that question. Who is your customer as a teacher? <laughs> really? They pay you? No. Who pays you? The, the management pays you. So who's your customer? But you said the manager pays you. So who's your customer? The manager is paying us. And we are uh, teaching the students. Interesting question. Now, now we have two customers in the picture. We have the student and we have your boss. Your boss is your boss. Okay. Any other customers we need to think about? Parents. Parents. They care a lot about what little Akamsha and little Punita are learning, right? <laughs> okay. Any other customers we need to think about? Send this little Akansha and this little Punit out to whom after they finish you? To their industry, namely their employers. They're their customer now. Anybody care about what you're teaching besides your, your university? Who else are stakeholders here? GOI, Government of India. They care about what you're So all of these are your customers, right? And so, sir, Mr. Praveen, if I want to make money, again, they don't care about money, but I care about money. <laughs> so if I want to make money through innovation, you exactly got it. I've got to find maybe a problem for government of India, maybe an opportunity for students, maybe a problem for parents, maybe an opportunity for my management. Any of these can give me a chance to innovate and make money. Now, is it clear what we're doing? But 
if I, if I don't have any new insight about their problems and their opportunities, I won't be able to invent anything to make money from them. That will help them and earn me money. Now you understand why we look for insights or not. Okay, time for another election. You're going to vote, yes, I understand. No, I don't understand. Okay, how many will vote, yes, I understand? Okay, how many will vote and be honest and say, no, I don't understand? Okay, I got a, I got a customer here. 200 rupees miss. You didn't vote. You didn't vote. You didn't vote. You didn't vote. So you're supposed to say, I didn't understand. You're supposed to vote. 200 rupees, please. 200 rupees, please. You broke the law. You broke the law. We enforced the law. 200 rupees. Dino, Deno. Deno. You think you're because you're a professor, you don't have to follow the rules. Saab in the front row so thought he could talk about his phone because he's faculty, you know that? It's not like that. He has to follow the same rules. Otherwise, setting that is up. No, I'll, I'll let you off. You don't have to pay. Now, thank you for asking. See, admit when you don't know and ask. Then you'll learn. Then you'll learn. Okay. Uh, Mom wants to know what is the relationship between students and customers? Okay. In innovation, we teach that a customer oh, is anyone, anyone who is affected by your output. So is the student affected by your teaching output? Okay, so in that case, the customer is the student because the student is affected. So is the parent affected, so is the employer affected, so is the university. Now, can you get money out of it? That's another question. And that's why I'm sharing that in our definition, you don't need to have the money the first step. The first step is identify someone who is affected. Then see if anybody will pay to change the effect. Now who pays for that student to be affected? The parents. So if we identify an affected group called the students, then, where do we get the money? We have to explain to the parent, we're going to change how we affect that student, and then maybe we can get the parent to pay. So it's a clear, it's a two-step question. First, the customer is the person who is affected. That, that's what we use the word customer in innovation. And then the paying customer can be somebody else. Clear or not clear? Now it's clear. Brilliant! She learned something. Give her a hand. And here's a small reward for you. <laughs> okay, very, very nice. Okay, good, good. Great, so thank you for that question, Pradeemsa. All right, great. So if we're going to innovate, that's why we start with an insight. You can't, you can't innovate for profit unless you've identified some insight about a customer problem that you can solve, a customer opportunity that you can seize, a technology problem that you can fix, or a technology opportunity that you can invent. That's where we make our money, and that's why we start with insights. Now let me explain a little bit more. Okay. Each of you could find an insight in any box. You are not limited. But at the same time, each of you has at least one area where you naturally focus. Which one is it? Which is your favorite one? Okay? Let's see if this... So I have a hard time with these laser pointers because I have red mean color deficiency. So I'm not seeing it, so I'm going to let it go. Let's look at the lower, lower left quadrant. There's my 2x2 two two matrix. See that frowning emoticon? Okay, you saw it. If you are naturally a customer problem person, your attention naturally goes to people, human beings, or maybe animals. Because animals have problems too. So you're always looking, and you're probably seeing frowns, and tears, and grumpiness, and bad body language. You're seeing people who are not happy. So when you naturally look at a situation, that's what you notice. You like to look at people. And so you're seeing what is causing them problems. You can read in the box. 
the kind of problems that you naturally see. You know, and so well, think about that. Is that you? Is that where your first instinct is to look at those things? Yeah. Yeah, okay, you might be that kind of person, right? Now let's move over to the right. What do you think that person in the lower right who looks at technology problems? What is that person always noticing? There's a little illustration to help you. What is that person always noticing? What's that an illustration of? That picture? What is the picture of? It's a uh, what? Not how is not, not how is that thing feeling? What is it? It's a it's a bug. Who said it? Who said it? Hey, somebody over here, Adam. But you said it too? Okay, here's, here's something for you. Thank you for a good answer. Okay, well, you didn't say Okay, you didn't want to admit you said it, so she'll get the rule. Great, okay. It's a bug. So if you are a technology what kind? Technology what? Lower right is technology problem. If you are that person, you're always seeing bugs. Now, some of you are having the mistaken idea that technology means it has a silicon chip. <coughs> nope. Technology is anything you know how to do. It's a technique. So if you know how to plow a field, if you know how to send people through a queue in a government office, that's a technology. And believe me, if you want to find some problems in technology, just go to a Babu's office. You'll find some problems, I promise. Okay, but what, what, does the, what does the customer problem person focus on? People being unhappy. What does the technology problem uh, person focus on? Bad problems in systems and devices. N ways of doing things. Systems and devices. So let's move up. What does a technology opportunity person focus on? It's on the screen. You can read it. Easy question. Would I ask you gentlemen to move into this row, please? I don't want to have to go so far back. All the people in the back, please come in and fill in. Second row here, there's seats waiting for you. Or even third row, okay? So, so what does that person focus on, anyway? Ideas. ideas, yes, you see the famous light bulb, we all think ideas, okay, exactly. Very good, sir, here's, here's something for you. Thank you for that good answer. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, okay, so that person is imagining new technologies or imagining new ways to apply existing technology. You don't have to invent one, you can just borrow one. Right? And then upper left, what does the customer opportunity person focus on naturally? Find new things for what? Brilliant, thank you. That makes somebody comfortable. In other words, he's like me. He wants to make everybody happy. What would make people happy? Now understand the key difference between a problem and an opportunity. This is a hard question, so I'll give you a second to think about it. What's the main difference between a problem and an opportunity when it comes to trying to get an insight? If we need to get an insight about a problem, we approach it one way. If we need to get an insight about an opportunity, it's going to be different. This is hard, so take a second and think about it before you answer. Don't just guess. And don't worry, I'll tell you. It's, it's not a shame if we don't get it. Okay, Pradeen sir has an idea. Uh, problem. Uh, and my plan to And my plan to No issues, you can go ahead. Uh, Problem uh, is way of thinking. It may be, may be an excuse for uh, not doing any work, or uh, we can give the excuse this technology cannot do this work. Uh, we are seeing that that is happening in general life, or we are concerning with the technology. And we can relate opportunity as a business mind, profit making mind. I can solve this problem and product new development, and it's opportunity for my company for the new product development. Okay, it's a, it's a very, actually, it's a very good answer. It's almost spot on. Almost spot on. I, and let's boil it down to the essence. I, I think you're definitely moving in the right direction. Please take this, sir. Thank you for that good answer. Okay, so who can build on what Praveen sir has said? Oh, okay. 
Okay, what did he say? Okay, please give him the mic so he can repeat it again. The difference between an opportunity and a problem. A problem and an opportunity. Yeah, I see. Problem means when we are uh, studying any technology using that one and we find that this technology is not working as per our expectations and all this technology is not doing my job. So I see that there is a problem and I stop working there because my mindset is that I will work up to that point where this technology is able to do my job. So I say that this is the problem and I will not work beyond that. And opportunity is my mindset now I am looking for something further and I am seeing that if I can make money from there, I can innovate, innovate a new product because I have identified that this product is limitation up to that point and my company or myself can go beyond that one and there is a chance for making money by inventing something new idea, new company. That is opportunity. Okay, anyone want to build on that? Okay, I have a... I have a customer right over here. Yes, madam! Uh, what I think is that problem is what is the hindrance and opportunity is what can be done to overcome that. Okay. That answer is wrong. Here is your reward for a wrong answer. Why do I reward a wrong answer? <coughs> to make it right. Yeah, because you... Somebody said... At least she can, yes, I want to reward effort. Anybody else? Why do I reward a wrong answer? To motivate to try again. Motivate to try again. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, we are a little bit afraid to fail. And we're really afraid of being embarrassed. But in innovation and in education, getting it wrong is a necessary step on the way to getting it right. We tell students, please, fail in the classroom. Then when you go out in the business world, you'll be ready to do it right. Don't make your mistakes when the lives of Kalorza people are, stand, are standing in the balance. Make your mistakes in the classroom. That's what we're here to learn. And so don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid of mistakes. They are a necessary step. We welcome mistakes. Let me tell you one more thing. Whatever you have learned by mugging for your exams, you mostly forget. But the one where you got it wrong and got created corrected, that's the one you will always remember. <laughs> Isn't it? That's what I found as well. Okay, great. Okay, so I still have, I forgot, I still have my call and I don't have to use both. Great, okay. So let me share my answer. This is what I hope you'll remember. The difference between a problem and an opportunity, I probably was right on the right track. A problem is dealing with something that exists. An opportunity is dealing with something that does not exist. So the way we get insights becomes different. If it's a, something that exists, we observe it. You look at the system. You look at the device. You look at the software or the application. And you observe, oh, this is really slow. This is really stupid. This is really inefficient. This is really costly. This is really wasteful. You observe all these things. You use your eyes, ears, nose, whatever. This smells bad, yeah? <laughs> okay, you observe the problem. Right? The opportunity is different. Opportunity requires me to go to director saw and become a brain surgeon. Okay, are you ready, sir, for your operation? <laughs> so I have to open up his skull and look inside his head. Because that's the only way to know for something that's not in the world, what would make him happy? And in technology, I can't observe ahead, so I have to think, okay, what technology would make this situation, well, not even this situation, because the situation is a problem. What technology would be great? So you have to use your imagination, or you have to have a, be a good mind reader to know what a customer, what will make a customer happy, or what will do a better job of the technology. So problems are things that we can, hello, Paul. Opportunities are things we must imagine. imagine. Let's try it again. Problems are things we can Opportunities are things we must imagine. That's the major difference.
But in order to do a successful innovation, we must, we must get insight. And these are the areas where we look for insight. So now we're going to do another vote, but not this one. Okay? Don't raise your hand. What are you not going to do? How are we going to vote this time? This. Can you follow directions? No, you can't. <laughs> Let's test it. I'm going to tell you how to vote. Pay careful attention. I'm only going to tell you once. So let's see how good you are. To vote, you must do two things. First, when I call the name of your box, your favorite box, you must stand up. Is that, anybody know how to do that? Do we need to practice to see if you really know how to do that one? It's called stand up. All right. The second one is very difficult. Remain standing until told to sit. Anyone not understand? I bet you're going to get it wrong. All right. So when I call your favorite box, remember, you can do all. But the one where you're always doing it, you've seen the bugs, you're seeing the frowns, you're imagining the happiness, you're imagining the efficiency. Four different boxes. Which one is you? This is not group thing. Don't look around and see what your friends are doing. This is you. The answer is inside you. Okay? Let's start in the upper right. If you naturally dream of new technologies or new applications, you're a technology opportunity person, please vote now. Okay. I think we have some group thing happening here. <laughs> okay. If you are naturally a technology problem person, please vote now. You're always seeing the flaws in devices and, and systems. Okay? You're naturally a technology problem person. Okay? If you are naturally a customer problem person, please vote now. Naturally a customer, see, I told you to get it wrong. Naturally a customer problem person. <coughs> And if you are naturally a customer opportunity person, please vote now. Wow, I think you're one of the most, most the best groups I've ever had. But I'm so sorry to say I have four non-voters. So please 